Detection theory or signal detection theory is a means to measure the ability to differentiate between information bearing patterns called stimulus in living organisms, signal in machines, and random patterns that distract from the information called noise, consisting of background stimuli and random activity of the detection machine and of the nervous system of the operator. In the field of electronics, the separation of such patterns from a disguising background is referred to as signal recovery. According to the theory, there are a number of determiners of how a detecting system will detect a signal, and where its threshold levels will be. The theory can explain how changing the threshold will affect the ability to discern, often exposing how adapted the system is to the task, purpose, or goal at which it is aimed. Another field which is closely related to signal detection theory is called compressed sensing or compressive sensing. The objective of compressed sensing is to recover high dimensional but with low complexity entities from only a few measurements. Thus, one of the most important applications of compressed sensing is in the recovery of high dimensional signals which are known to be sparse or nearly sparse with only a few linear measurements. The number of measurements needed in the recovery of signals is by far smaller than what Nyquist sampling theorem requires provided that the signal is sparse, meaning that it only contains a few non-zero elements. There are different methods of signal recovery in compressed sensing including basis pursuit, expander recovery algorithm, COSIMP and also fast non-iterative algorithm. In all of the recovery methods mentioned above, choosing an appropriate measurement matrix using probabilistic constructions or deterministic constructions, is of great importance. In other words, measurement matrices must satisfy certain specific conditions such as RIP restricted isometry property or null space property in order to achieve robust sparse recovery. Back to the detecting theory, when the detecting system is a human being, characteristics such as experience, expectations, physiological state e fatigue, and other factors can affect the threshold applied. For instance, a sentry in wartime might be likely to detect fainter stimuli than the same sentry in peacetime due to a lower criterion, however they might also be more likely to treat innocuous stimuli as a threat. Much of the early work in detection theory was done by radar researchers. By 1954, the theory was fully developed on the theoretical side as described by Peterson, Birdsall and Fox and the foundation for the psychological theory was made by Wilson P. Tanner, David M. Green, and John A. Sweats, also in 1954. Detection theory was used in 1966 by John A. Sweats and David M. Green for psychophysics. Green and Sweats criticized the traditional methods of psychophysics for their inability to discriminate between the real sensitivity of subjects and their potential response biases. Detection theory has applications in many fields such as diagnostics of any kind, quality control, telecommunications, and psychology. The concept is similar to the signal to noise ratio used in the sciences and confusion matrices used in artificial intelligence. It is also usable in alarm management, where it is important to separate important events from background noise. Psychology Signal detection theory is used when psychologists want to measure the way we make decisions under conditions of uncertainty, such as how we would perceive distances in foggy conditions or during eyewitness identification. SDT assumes that the decision maker is not a passive receiver of information, but an active decision maker who makes difficult perceptual judgments under conditions of uncertainty. In foggy circumstances, we are forced to decide how far away from us an object is, based solely upon visual stimulus which is impaired by the fog. Since the brightness of the object, such as a traffic light, is used by the brain to discriminate the distance of an object, and the fog reduces the brightness of objects, we perceive the object to be much farther away than it actually is see also decision theory. According to SDT, during eyewitness identifications, witnesses base their decision as to whether a suspect is the culprit or not based on their perceived level of familiarity with the suspect. To apply signal detection theory to a data set where stimuli were either present or absent, and the observer categorized each trial as having the stimulus present or absent, the trials are sorted into one of four categories Based on the proportions of these types of trials, numerical estimates of sensitivity can be obtained with statistics like the sensitivity index D and A, and response bias can be estimated with statistics like C and beta. Signal detection theory can also be applied to memory experiments, where items are presented on a study list for later testing. 
A test list is created by combining these old items with novel, new items that did not appear on the study list. On each test trial the subject will respond yes, this was on the study list or no, this was not on the study list. Items presented on the study list are called targets, and new items are called distractors. Saying yes to a target constitutes a hit, while saying yes to a distractor constitutes a false alarm. Applications <inaudible> 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 Signal detection theory has wide application, both in humans and animals. Topics include memory, stimulus characteristics of schedules of reinforcement, etc. <laughs> Sensitivity or discriminability Conceptually, sensitivity refers to how hard or easy it is to detect that a target stimulus is present from background events. For example, in a recognition memory paradigm, having longer to study to be remembered words makes it easier to recognize previously seen or heard words. In contrast, having to remember 30 words rather than 5 makes the discrimination harder. One of the most commonly used statistics for computing sensitivity is the so called sensitivity index or D. There are also non parametric measures, such as the area under the rock curve. Bias Bias is the extent to which one response is more probable than another. That is, a receiver may be more likely to respond that a stimulus is present or more likely to respond that a stimulus is not present. Bias is independent of sensitivity. For example, if there is a penalty for either false alarms or misses, this may influence bias. If the stimulus is a bomber, then a miss failing to detect the plane may increase deaths, so a liberal bias is likely. In contrast, crying wolf a false alarm too often may make people less likely to respond, grounds for a conservative bias. Mathematics <laughs> 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 P H one Y greater than P H two Y map testing. In the case of making a decision between two hypotheses, H one absent and H two present, in the event of a particular observation, Y, a classical approach is to choose H one when P H one Y greater than P H two Y and H two in the reverse case. In the event that the two a posteriori probabilities are equal, one might choose to default to a single choice either always choose H1 or always choose H2, or might randomly select either H1 or H2. The a priori probabilities of H1 and H2 can guide this choice, e.g. by always choosing the hypothesis with the higher a priori probability. When taking this approach, usually what one knows are the conditional probabilities, p y, h1, and p y, h2, and the a priori probabilities p h1 equals pi 1 display style p h1 equals pi underscore 1 and p h2 equals Pi two display style p h two equals pi underscore two. In this case, p h one y equals p y h one pi one p y Display style p h one y equals frac p y h one c d o t pi underscore one p y p h two y equals p y h two pi two p y Display style p h two y equals frac p y h two c d o t pi underscore two p y, where p y is the total probability of event y, p y 
h 1 pi 1 plus p y h 2 pi 2 Display style p y h one c d o t pi underscore one plus p y h two c d o t pi underscore two. H two is chosen in case p y h two pi two p y h one pi one plus p y h 2 pi 2 p y h 1 pi 1 p y h 1 pi 1 plus p y H two Pi two Display style FRAC P Y H two C D O T Pi underscore two P Y H one C D O T Pi underscore one plus P Y H two C D O T Pi underscore two G E Q FRAC P Y H one C D O T Pi underscore one P Y H one C D O T Pi underscore one plus P Y H two C D O T Pi underscore two P Y H two P Y H one Pi one Pi two Display style right arrow FRAC P Y H two P Y H one G E Q FRAC Pi underscore one Pi underscore two and H one otherwise Often the ratio pi one pi two display style frac pi underscore one pi underscore two is called tau m a p display style tau underscore map and p y h two P Y H one Display style FRAC P Y H two P Y H one is called L Y Display style L Y the likelihood ratio. Using this terminology, H two is chosen in case L Y Tau M a P display style L Y G E Q tau underscore map. This is called map testing, where map stands for maximum a posteriori. Taking this approach minimizes the expected number of errors one will make. Topic: <laughs> Bayes criterion. In some cases, it is far more important to respond appropriately to H1 than it is to respond appropriately to H2. For example, if an alarm goes off, indicating H1 an incoming bomber is carrying a nuclear weapon, it is much more important to shoot down the bomber if H1. True, than it is to avoid sending a fighter squadron to inspect a false alarm i.e., H1. False, H2 equals true assuming a large supply of fighter squadrons. The Bayes criterion is an approach suitable for such cases, here a utility is associated with each of four situations U 11 1 responds with behavior appropriate to H1 and H1 is true, fighters destroy bomber, incurring fuel, maintenance, and weapons costs, take risk of some being shot down, U twelve Display style U underscore twelve 
One responds with behavior appropriate to H1 and H2 is true. Fighters sent out, incurring fuel and maintenance costs. Bomber location remains unknown. U21 Display style U underscore 21. One responds with behavior appropriate to H2 and H1 is true. City destroyed. U22 Display style U underscore 22. One responds with behavior appropriate to H2 and H2 is true, fighters stay home, bomber location remains unknown, as is shown below, what is important are the differences U 11 minus U 21 and U 22 minus U 12 display style u underscore 22 u underscore 12 similarly there are four probabilities p 11 display style p underscore 11 p 12 display style p underscore 12 etc for each of the cases which are dependent on one's decision strategy the Bayes criterion approach is to maximize the expected utility. U equals p eleven u eleven plus p twenty one u twenty one plus p twelve u twelve plus p 22 u 22 display style u equals p underscore 11 c d o t u underscore 11 plus p underscore 21 c d o t u underscore 21 plus p underscore 12 c d o t u underscore 12 plus p underscore 22 c d o t u underscore 22 u equals p 11 u 11 plus 1 minus p 11 u 21 plus p 12 u 12 plus 1 minus p 12 u 22 Display style u equals p underscore one one c d o t u underscore eleven plus one p underscore eleven c d o t u underscore twenty one plus p underscore twelve c d o t u underscore twelve plus one p underscore twelve c d o t u underscore twenty two u equals u twenty one plus u Twenty two plus P eleven U eleven minus U twenty one minus P twelve U twenty two minus U twelve Display style u equals u underscore twenty one plus u underscore twenty two plus p underscore eleven c d o t u underscore eleven u underscore twenty one p underscore twelve c d o t u underscore twenty two u underscore twelve. Effectively, one may maximize the sum u equals p eleven u eleven minus U twenty one minus P twelve U twenty two minus U twelve Display style U equals P underscore eleven C D O T U underscore eleven U underscore twenty one P underscore twelve C D O T U underscore twenty two U underscore twelve and make the F Following substitutions P eleven equals Pi one R one P 
y h 1 d y display style p underscore 11 equals pi underscore 1 c d o t int underscore r underscore 1 p y h 1 die p 12 equals pi 2 r 1 p y h 2 d y display style p underscore 12 equals pi underscore 2 c d o t int underscore r underscore 1 p y h 2 die where pi 1 display style pi underscore 1 and pi 2 display style pi underscore 2 are the a priori probabilities p h 1 display style p h 1 and p h 2 display style p h 2 and R one display style R underscore one is the region of observation events y that are responded to as though H one is true. U equals R one pi one U eleven minus U twenty one p y H one minus Pi two U twenty two minus U twelve P Y H two D Y Display style right arrow u equals int underscore r underscore one left pi underscore one c d o t u underscore eleven u underscore twenty one c d o t p y h one pi underscore two c d o t u underscore twenty two u underscore twelve c d o t p y h two right die u display style u and thus u display style u are maximized by extending r one display style r underscore one over the region where pi one u eleven minus u twenty one p y h one minus pi two u 22 minus u 12 p y h 2 greater than 0 Display style pi underscore one c d o t u underscore eleven u underscore twenty one c d o t p y h one pi underscore two c d o t u underscore twenty two u underscore twelve c d o t p y h two greater than zero. This is accomplished by deciding h two in case pi two u twenty two minus u 12 p y h 2 pi 1 u 1 1 minus u 21 p y h 1 Display style pi underscore two c d o t u underscore twenty two u underscore twelve c d o t p y h two g e q pi underscore one c d o t u underscore eleven u underscore twenty one c d o t p y h one l y p y h two p y h one Pi one U eleven minus 
U twenty one Pi two U twenty two minus U twelve Tau B Display style right arrow L Y a quiv FRAC P Y H two P Y H one G E Q FRAC Pi underscore one C D O T U underscore eleven U underscore twenty one Pi underscore two C D O T U underscore twenty two U underscore twelve a quiv Tau underscore B and H one otherwise, where L Y is the so defined likelihood ratio equals equals see also